Hi, I'm Jay Swerber, and this is North Missouri Woodworking on CVTV. We got a little different show today. Uh, we were we were talking. We decided to do something a little little fun, and uh, we're going to do my top ten hand tool list. Uh, but I've actually I've thrown in a couple of power tools just because I couldn't help myself. So let's just get started on this thing. We're going to roll right into number ten. <laughs> Right here. This is my number 10 item. This is this is a 9-in-1 painting tool. Uh, this one is Richard Brand. It's kind of like a, a joke in our family. Uh, and you can you can use that joke however you feel fit. But this is one cool tool. Uh, the Richard Brand actually is a pretty good pretty good brand. It's got an end on it that you can pound on. Uh, I sharpen them up a little bit down here so it's got a nice sharp edge. You can pull tacks with them. You can scrape a paint roller out with it. Uh, you can clean crevices, you can scrape off a contour. This thing is like MacGyver would own one of these. I guarantee it. There is not a doubt in my mind that MacGyver does not own a 9-in-1 painting tool. <laughs> Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine is my hearing protectors. These are Peltors. These things rock. And I got started using hearing protectors when I was in the gun business. A lot of you folks know this. I had a gun shop for years and uh, I was around shooting a lot and I was around guys that shot a lot their whole lives, guys that had been, been to, to war and everything. And inevitably the second word of any conversation was, huh? And I was bound determined that I was going to save my hearing and not end up like that. And, and I do have some hearing loss. I got some ringing in my ears and everything. But it's not because I didn't give it the old team effort. Uh, if you've watched my show, you've seen me put these things on every single time I start up a power tool. Because uh, your hearing is such a valuable thing. I love music. I play music. And uh, you got to be able to hear to be, to be able to do that. And... Uh, so hearing protectors, they're number nine on my list, and a, and a good pair, I mean, spend some, spend some money, throw some bucks down for them. Don't just go to Harbor Freight and buy a $1.99 set of hearing protectors. Uh, buy something that's comfortable. These have nice soft seals. They, they adjust a little bit. Uh, they're good stuff. That's number nine on my list. <laughs> Number eight, the combination square. And this one, this one's been with me for a bunch, bunch of years as a Mitsutoya. And uh, I, this, is, this is a tool that if you don't have it in your shop, I don't know what's wrong with you. You need to go get you one. And, and, and there again, buy something that's good. Buy something that's going to move easy, that you're, you're absolutely, uh, you're going to love it every time you pick it up because... I love this every time I pick it up. It's got a little bubble in it here for checking the level and stuff, which is absolutely worthless in real life, but it's there for you to admire. Uh, the thing, you can, you, can, you can stop it anywhere. It's perfectly square. It's a high enough quality that it's perfectly square where you stop it. You got a 90 here. You got a 45 on the back side of it. Uh, I've got fixed squares. I've got carpenter squares. I've got... I got Every guy that does any kind of woodworking of any sorts, he's got squares running out of his ears. But this little square right here, this thing is used more than any other square in my shop. So number, what number are we on? Eight. Number eight. This is number eight on my all-time list. <laughs> Number seven, the old pocket hammer. Uh, my wife got me got me this. It's a little six ounce hammer, and uh, she got this for me because I don't know. I guess I'd been admiring it or something, as 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 only men can admire a hammer. Uh, I I I wanted one of these. Maybe I had circled it 27 times in a catalog or something like that. I really don't know. But this is a cool little hammer. Uh, it's a tiny little hammer, six ounce. You're not gonna go framing a house with it or anything like that. But for working on furniture, 
uh, driving in a tack, something like that. This thing gets used continually. It's, you can see the thing is just about as ugly as it can possibly be. It's caked with glue. It's obviously been used a lot. Uh, it's got a hickory handle in it. Uh, this, thing, this thing just rocks. The claws on it, they're rounded off. I don't know if you can see that. The claws are rounded off on it. You can actually stick it in your back pocket, pull it out, and it's not going to hang up on things. So this is number seven on my all-time list, the pocket hammer. <laughs> And number six, oh, it's the apron plane. Uh, you've seen other shows that I've done, and I've I've had this thing out. It cost it costs some money, but this thing is just is joy to use. It feels good. It's heavy. It's well made. Uh, and and you, you've probably seen shows where I've I've used this thing and I've peeled off shavings that are just you can see through them. They're so thin. Uh, it's easy to adjust. It stays in adjustment. It's a tool that I get that just it gets all kinds of use in my shop. It's, I use it every single day, and that's not an exaggeration. This thing is used all the time. There's there's so many times that that guys they fool around and they get out a power tool and 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 mess around with it and make a big mess when all they really need is just pull out a little plane like this and knock a few licks off the side of the board or take a corner off or whatever. It's really efficient. It's fun to use. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, it's not like going to the circus, but it's, it's fun. I enjoy using the thing. So that's number six on my all-time list. The apron praying, plain, praying, plain. <laughs> The Bessie clamp. This is the. These are are the Cadillac of woodworking clamps, and you got the old school guys. And I started off with them. Started the old school guys. They they use pipe clamps. Pipe clamps are great. They leave black marks on the back of your wood whenever you, you glue them up, and you think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And that's the way pipe clamps work. Bessie clamps don't. Uh, they don't leave any marks on your wood. They adjust up easy. The jaws are perfectly parallel to one another. Whenever you squeeze something up in a Bessie clamp, it's not going to roll it. It's not going to tilt it. If you if you got stuff glued up, they balance on their end. If you got like three or four clamps here, you can go over and set them in the corner like a couple of little soldiers holding up your board if that's what you want to do. And uh, stretching them out, laying up a, like a, a cabinet top or something. I've got them in several lengths. This is a two footer here. I've got some 36 inches and some 50s and, and uh, some other sizes. Uh, these things, these are the absolute epitome of, of woodworking clamps. And if you don't have some of them, I don't know why. It makes me sad that you don't have any. It's the centering tape measure. This is made, these, these tape measures, I've got two or three of them, and uh, uh, a lot of people just, a tape measure is a tape measure, and there's a, there's a def definite difference in them. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know if these things are still made. I bought up three or four of them a few years ago, and one by one, they're wearing out and getting pitched. Uh, this is made by, I'm going to, I don't Bachland Heller Incorporated, B-A-K-L-U-N-D-H-E-L-L-A-R. And the name of the tape is the center point. This is a 25 footer. Uh, it, it's got a clip on the back side of it like every tape measure in the world has. The case on it's plastic. They're nearly indestructible. These have been dropped. They've been, had stuff dropped on them. Uh, I've never broke the case on one of these things. Uh, so this stuff is is made of like what Superman shoes are made out of or something or another. I don't know what it's made out of. The cool feature of this tape, uh, and there's some other companies, I think Lufkin makes one and uh, maybe another company that I've got one here somewhere, uh, makes these centering tapes. 
at what it does. It, it has a little tendency to make you stupid, but stupid in a good way. Uh, if you've got a, a board that's, let's say, 27 and 3 quarter inches across, and you don't want to sit around and try to figure that out, or if you're not too sharp in the math department, although you tried real hard in grade school, wheel this thing out here, you look at 27 and 3 quarter, and you're going to know that 13 and 7 eighths is the center of that board. And that sounds like something really silly. I'm, I mean, it is a little bit. But you've, you've got to know the center of things so many times when you're working on stuff. Uh, if you're, you're spreading out parts that are going to be fastened down, if you're positioning rails in a panel or whatever, they need to be evenly spaced out. You've got to start off from the center to know where you're going to, where you're going to go with the rest of your parts. And uh, this, this little tape measure here, it's, it's a prize winner. And it's number, what number is this thing? It's number four on my list. I got my cheat sheet over here. It's number four. Number four on my all-time favorite list, center point tape measure. Number three on my all-time list. It's my sorby chisels. It's all right? It's all right. <laughs> these things here, uh, these were a gift one year, and I was just kind of like when, when, when Sal gave these to me, I was totally blown away. Uh, these are our top of the line chisels, and I thought, my gosh, what in the world am I going to do with a set of chisels like this? Because these, <laughs> these are nice. Uh, they're beveled chisel, uh, they've got tapered sides on them, uh, they stay sharp like you can't believe. They've got a leather cushion here, uh, boxwood handles, and the handle is, is, is hex shaped so it's not going to roll off the table like a lot of, a lot of chisels are, have a round handle on them and they, they get away from you. Uh, I've got, got them all the way from inch down to, to an eighth. And, uh, these aren't the chisels that I get out when I'm, when I'm scraping around on a piece of furniture or I'm tearing something apart or whatever. These are the chisels that I get out and use when I'm doing an inlay on something or uh, when, I'm, when I'm finishing up a dovetail joint or something like that that I've cut by hand. These are the chisels that I get out that, really, that I use when it really matters on something because they're so precision. Uh, I keep them shaving sharp all the time and they're just a, a joint of pleasure to use. They're, there, there's something about a, a really high quality chisel. They feel good in your hand. They got a lot of weight to them. Uh, you can pound around on the back side of them with an acceptable uh, mallet that's not going to not going to beat them up uh, if you need to. But there's really there's no need to taking taking little slivers off of, of stuff, even even hard stuff like white oak or something like that. It's it's so easy with these chisels. So I'm going to put these. These Robert Sorby chisels, I'm going to put these at number three on my all-time tool list. It's all right? It's all right. Yeah. This is number two on my list. And I know we've been doing hand tools and stuff. I, but this sander, I, I dearly love this thing. I, if I wasn't married, I'd probably marry the thing. It's that great. The, the Festool sanders, they, uh, they, they do so much to, to keep you healthy and keep you from hacking whenever you go in, in the house at night. The sanding dust, that's killer stuff. That's this little powdery stuff that gets in your lungs. And you're going to go in and, at night and, and you're sneezing and, and just making a general scene in the living room and getting the stink eye from your wife. This thing right here is going to keep you from getting the stink eye. And you know that's important. These things are made in Germany. Uh, the, the Germans, they still know how to make a tool that's going to last. They also know how to make a tool that costs a lot of stinking money. But... These things are great. The vibration level on them when you're using them is, is real low. It's a, it's a sander that you can run all day long without just feeling like you got a case of the nerves at the end of the day. Uh, it's got the automatic vacuum uh, system that, that sits over here on the floor. It's on wheels. You can drag it around wherever you need to go. 
the dust collection on the thing is so efficient I, you can literally sand something in your living room and not make a mess and if you uh, if you do any kind of work inside your home it's it's invaluable yeah you do work outside your home for other folks this is this something like this is going to save you from getting the stink eye uh, there's no mess uh, I've used used it in our house and there's just there's nothing that settles on the furniture when I'm when I'm done sanding it collects nearly all of it uh, it's a six inch sander uh, it's it's velcro on the bottom here uh, the there's just there's just so many things that I can say about this the filtration system on it, it's got a bag a disposable bag that collects the big stuff and uh, those are disposable or you can be a cheater like me and hook them up to the shop vac and suck them out and use them again uh, it's got a got a two-stage HEPA filter on it that takes any tiny little micro particles whatever the scientist word for that is takes those out before they enter the air and start floating around and making life miserable for you whenever they get on the furniture. Uh, man, I'm making it sound like I do all my woodworking in the house, but I don't. I do it out here. So the, the Festool 150 sander, I've got another one of these. It's a Rotex. It's a more aggressive. It's a little bigger sand, sander that I use a lot too. Number two on my all-time tool list. <laughs> Number one on my all-time tool list, don't you dare laugh, because this is the tool that gets used more than any other power tool in my shop, my pencil sharpener. See, that's, that's just a happy thing right there. I want to do it again. Isn't that awesome? This thing gets used every single day, multiple times a day. If you don't have an electric pencil sharpener in your shop, I don't know what to say about you. You're just like, you're not in the man club anymore. Really. Get an electric pencil sharpener. It's number one on my all-time tool list. So, that's it for this show. That's my number 10 list of tools that I cannot be without in this shop. I've got to have them. I, I, I use them all the time. I use them, use them hard. Uh, you need to have these tools too, really. Just just go get them because they're fun to have. I mean, even if you don't want to use them, they're fun to have. Uh, I'd like for you to get, if you're on Facebook, check out my shop on, on uh, Facebook. It's Weber's Furniture and Restoration. That's uh, pretty easy to find. Look it up, like it, and I'll like it if you like it. This is Jace Weber, North Missouri Woodworking on CVTV. Thanks for watching.